Coming up this week on Sporting Journal Radio, we're excited about a new sports show. You know, the, as the fall season winds down, we already have ice forming in some of the back bays. The cool s- stories from this hunting season uh, just continue to roll on. Broadcasting on the Sporting Journal Radio Network, wherever you get your podcasts or watch on YouTube. Well, we're here at the 2024 Pheasant Fest in Quail Classic. Presented by OnX. Know where you stand with OnX. And our guest now is Jeremy Smith. I fish, I hunt, and always will. It's just to look out for your everyday hunter, angler, and trapper that's out there. A Fish on Forever production. This is Sporting Journal Radio. Welcome to the show. We've got a new sports show coming to the Twin Cities that you're going to want to hear about. Barry Seneco is going to join us. Also, Joe Henry has got a Lake of the Woods fishing report for us. And uh, that's Dan Amundsen. He's going to talk about deer hunting in Wisconsin this year. Oh, where is it? There he is. What's going yeah, on, Dan? I, by the way, uh, I know you're looking at your camera there, but the camera I know. I keep looking at the wrong camera. Yeah, you're just I like, let, let, let look at us in the <laughs> distance here. Let's do a show. Uh, well, you look right here. Right here, I know. We're uh, we're so Dan's on the road right now. Our equipment is kind of scattered, and uh, we're we're doing this on the run. So figuring it out as we go, but we'll make it work. And we got a lot to get to this week. It. What's that? You're still doing, doing it. Again. I know. God dang, it's such a habit. <laughs> Anyway, um, we got a couple things to talk about, including making duck season late again. We're going to talk about how this season went and uh, whether or not extending the dates would have been a good idea or not. In my case, I agree they would. Going a little bit later. We're going to talk about the deer Dan Dan shot in Wisconsin. And uh, we'll talk about a couple other things, too, including um, some public comments that the DNR is looking for from you if you spend time on uh, ATV. So all that coming up. But first, Dan, who are this week's sponsors? The official truck sponsor of Invergrove Toyota. Uh, no, the official truck sponsor of Fish Hunt Forever is Invergrove <laughs> Toyota. When looking for your new rig, head to Invergrove Toyota. Lake of the Woods Tourism. Lake of the Woods is the Walla Capital Plan. An ice fishing trip this winter at Lake of the Woods MN.com. On X Hunt, see private land boundaries, recent imagery, offline maps, and Minnesota specific hunt layers. Download the On X Hunt app today. Tazan Lake Lodge. Catch world record lake trout and giant pike at Saskatchewan and Tazan Lake. Learn more at TazanLake.com. Devil's Lake, North Dakota. It's uh, frozen. Go catch it all at Devil's Lake. Prairie Sportsman, new season is being filmed right now, but you can watch episodes anytime at the Prairie Sportsman new YouTube channel. Haybell Heights Campground and Resort plan to fish Devil's Lake out of a snow bear this winter. Learn more at haybellheights.com and Guardian Eagle Resort. Go fish the Ontario waters of Guardian Eagle Resort. You can fly directly from the Twin Cities. Learn more at guardianeagle.com. All right, it's time for headlines. 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 Of Toyota get 1.99% APR for 72 months on a new 24 Tundra or 3.99% on 24 Tacomas. And only for you, if you're listening to this or watching this, we have a deal for you. Get $250 off the lowest advertised price and an additional $500 for your trade-in. This is a great deal just for you. Visit InbergroveToyota.com slash FHF. We have a link at sportingjournalradio.com. And if you're watching this on YouTube, we probably have a link in the description down below. Fill out the form to save on your next Toyota. They have deals on uh, Camrys, on Tacomas, on Tundras, a whole line of Toyotas at Invergrove Toyota, 494 and Robert Street in Invergrove Heights, Minnesota. All right, the DNR is accepting comments through December 26 on an environmental assessment worksheet to address the second phase of a proposed ATV trail expansion in Kuchiching in St. Louis counties. The Voyager Country ATV Club is proposing up to 125 additional miles of roadway and natural surface trail be included in the Voyager County ATV system, connecting communities in Kuchiching and St. Louis counties. The proposed project includes 39 miles of existing route that will not see any changes, 78 miles of existing route with improvements, and 8 miles of new trail. Also, the first ever surplus of Wild Lake Superior strain juvenile steelhead have been utilized for stocking. So in 2017, the DNR began raising steelhead trout to bolster the population in streams along the North Shore. The program began with the intent to raise clipped for harvest fish, which means only fish with a clipped adipose fin can be kept by anglers. The adipose is a small fin on the back of the fish 
between the dorsal and the caudal fin. With multiple fish being more than five years old now, the program is working with fully matured adults in prime reproduction age. Female fish are producing more eggs than in previous years and reproduction is exceeding expectations. This is great news, by the way. The program goals were set by the DNR's Lake Superior fishery staff and compared to those goals, a surplus of steelhead were produced. The DNR used this surplus of steelhead juveniles, which will be of harvestable age in the coming years, to increase populations uh, along the North Shore. So that's great news right there. And as, wow. as Dan mentioned earlier, it's a hard water season, or, or at least it's beginning. In a lot of places, ice is freezing up. In fact, Devil's Lake, we've been seeing some of the uh, reports of Devil's Lake getting some fishable ice. And if you're looking for a world-class ice fishing destination this fall, check out Devil's Lake, North Dakota. The walleye bite is strong. The perch bite is strong. The ice is building. Catch it all at Devil's Lake. Visit devilslakeandy.com to learn more and plan your next trip and see our video from Hay Bale Heights at Devil's Lake right now at the Fish Hunt Forever YouTube channel and out there with Jordan Berg. It's a great time. HayBaleLights.com to book a trip to Hay Bale. All right. So Dan, you're in Wisconsin right now and you shot a deer the other day and you posted something about it on social media about having a cool story about it. And you didn't even tell me what the story was yet. No, it's, uh, you know, the, the cool st stories from this hunting season uh, just continue to roll on. We've talked about uh, Saskatchewan, the snow goose deal in Saskatchewan. We talked about my grandpa's deer from Minnesota this year. And uh, then it was my turn. So the, the nine day gun deer Wisconsin season is it's a big rich tradition it's got to be one of the best hunting traditions in the country if not the world it's it's a huge deal over here and it's a big deal for out-of-staters like us we've been doing it uh my whole life most of your whole life the amundsons have been doing this and uh, uh it was no different this year we're back over here doing it again um got a smaller crew this year but uh, we came over friday night so we've been hunting and uh uh, I was sitting with my dad for a couple days. We always like to do that a few times. And we sat Monday morning, and uh, it was kind of snowy, kind of rainy, sleety. It was just wet. And so we came in at lunch, and normally over lunch, I'll just leave my rifle in the truck and whatever. We go back out in the afternoon. Well, I, I, we came in, and it was all wet, so I thought I'd bring it in, let it dry out, and uh, take care of it a little bit. And my dad had to head home and, and go do some work. He had to head back to the Twin Cities. He had some work to do. So he took off, and... I kind of, you know, ate lunch, went and packaged up some of the other deer that we had hanging, sat around, and it's like, well, gosh, we got to get back out there. It's 3 o'clock all of a sudden, and kind of running late. So I got dressed quick, hopped in the truck, drove out there, and, and uh, got to our spot, hopped out, put the rest of my clothes on, opened the back door, and I was thinking my dad's rifle was still in there. I'm like, oh, I better make sure that's, you know, cased up, tucked away, and not visible there. And I look, and there's only one rifle in the back seat. Huh. And it wasn't mine. <laughs> it wasn't Whoops. mine. And uh, luckily, we shoot the, the same model rifle. That's the, the rifle. That his rifle's the, the gun I shot my first year with. I think it's the gun you shot your first year with, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. And like, well, that's the same one I have, so I've got bullets for it. I guess we're, uh, I don't want to drive back. We're already run late, so I guess this is what we're hunting with. And uh, I'd already planned to go sit in a spot that was your dad's spot when he used to come up here and hunt. I already planned to sit there so now i'm going to my grandpa's stand with my dad's gun like this you know what are the odds that, that i'll actually have this work out like every time i've had something cool in my head a situation that'd be cool to plan out it the deer don't cooperate or something and i was actually sitting in the tree just daydreaming about how cool this would be if i shot a deer with these circumstances and a doe walked by and shot it it fell right on the trail so it was an easy drag out and uh it was uh, pretty darn cool. Grandpa's stand, dad's gun, and then I actually scun it out with uh, great grandpa's old hunting knife. So ah, that's rich cool. Amundsen tradition here over in uh, the northwest Wisconsin woods. It's uh, I mean, that's, makes it all worth it. That's what it's all about right there. I missed uh, being over there this year, and one of these years I got to get back over there for that because uh, I saw pictures from the from the dumpling dinner the other night, and uh, I felt like I was missing out on, on the family tradition. You were. Well, Congrats, Dan. I'm looking forward to the back straps, and uh, I'm also looking forward to doing some more, eating some more of the walleye that we got in the freezer. And if you're looking for walleyes next year, come fish the Ontario waters of Guardian Eagle Resort. Bring the family and fish for walleyes and pike on 75,000 acres of private water. You can fly direct from Minneapolis and land right at their lodge on their 3,200-foot concrete runway. Learn more at GuardianEagle.com. You can 
feed the walleyes right off the dock. It's pretty cool. See our video at the Fish Hunt Forever YouTube channel. All right, Barry Seneco is next to talk about a new sports show coming to the Twin Cities. It's going to be in Shakopee, so free parking, park right at the venue. I'm really excited about it. It's in January. We'll tell you more about it when we come back. In fact, we're going to be working the Tazan Lake Lodge booth while we're there. And if you're looking for a trip to northwest Saskatchewan for Trophy Lake Trout and Nor- Monster Northern Pike, visit tazanlake.com to learn all, all about it or come see us at the show in Shakopee. More details when we come back in Sporting Journal Radio. Sick of eating tag soup? It's time to own your odds this fall with Onyx Hunt, the GPS hunting app trusted by millions of hunters. Now you'll have access to nationwide public and private land ownership information, waypoints, optimal win for each stand, tracks, and much more all at your fingertips. Go to onxmaps.com slash hunt and use code SJR20 at checkout to receive 20% off your membership. That's code SJR20. Hi, this is Sporting Journal Radio. Thanks for tuning in on the radio network by demand, sportingjournalradio.com. Maybe you're watching this on Spotify or YouTube, wherever you're getting this show. Thank you very much for tuning in. We're excited about a new sports show. You know, the, as the fall season winds down, people get excited about ice fishing. And then as ice fishing starts to go, then it then it turns to the sports show season for those of us that live in the outdoor space. And we're not that far away from that. And there's a new one coming to the Twin Cities this year, and I'm really excited about it. To tell us more about it, Barry Seneco joins us right now. Barry, Barry's on the phone with us, so we're not going to be able to see him, but that's all right because uh, sounds like you're a little under the weather today, Barry. I am. Uh, the The cold and flu season definitely caught up with me. I got my voice back, so that's good because uh, you know it's pretty poor radio when you can't speak. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, I'm good to go and happy uh, to talk to you guys. Well, you sound good, and uh, honestly, getting sick now is probably the best because then you you yeah. got the uh, the immunity <laughs> built up before the show season starts. And man, this these sports shows with Seneco Productions. I mean, you guys have been doing this forever. How, I, I mean, let's let's go just before we start to talk about the new one coming up in Shakopee. It's going to be the first annual sportsman show. It's Minnesota's newest sports show, January seventeenth through the nineteenth, Canterbury Park in Shakopee. Before we get into all the details about that show, let's just go back to the beginning. Like, how long have you been doing this, and how many shows do you guys do? Yeah, so right now we do four sports shows and a boat show. My father started this 60 years ago. Our Red River Valley show at the Fargo Dome will be our 60th annual. Uh, Sioux Falls 57. Um, So we've been doing it for a while. We currently have sports shows in St. Cloud, Minnesota. Fargo, North Dakota, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We'll be starting this new one up in Canterbury. And then we also do a boat show in January in Fargo. So we're for sports shows and a boat show. And with the other companies we do, that's a great mix. You know, I didn't really, I did radio in Fargo for a number of years. And uh, of mm-hmm. course we, we'd, we'd work with you guys on that and uh, come out to the event. And obviously just as somebody that enjoys the outdoors, I'd be out there anyway. I didn't realize it started up there. Well, yeah, it did. It did. And um, a couple of years after that, it's it's kind of a fun story. Um, Dad, had he worked selling pots and pans at sports shows. And he said, boy, this sports show industry is something. He went to work for a guy, Dick Johnson, who a lot of people know. He's one of the original names in sports shows. And after a few years, he uh, got some experience and he worked with a local conservation group in Fargo and started the show. A few years later, he went to Sioux Falls. A few years later, he went to St. Paul. We just mm-hmm. kind of went from there. That's crazy. 60 years ago. That's yeah. amazing. I know people talk about that Fargo show as being, you know, one of the best shows around. And, and that would make sense because it's been around forever. So um, it is, you know, the shows were fortunate there. They become institutions in the cities we're in. And up until, you know, in 2020 uh, was our 50th year for having this Minnesota sportsman show at River Center, previously known as the Civic Center. And that show had run for 50 years and we snuck by in 2020. COVID wasn't much of a talking point. And then 21 came along. We weren't allowed to have a show. 22, we were, but I felt the cities weren't quite ready. And in 23, I just sensed that at least locally, the the downtowns weren't going to work the way they did before. And and I was fine to move on. And I've got other shows and we got a few other businesses. But it really seemed to me going into this year that the Twin Cities is hungry for a show, but perhaps they want to be 
in a suburban setting where they're a little more comfortable, lots of free parking. And so that, that brought up the whole concept of bringing the show back, but that's a Canterbury Park in Shakopee. You know, I, I work with another show that, that started it, it, oops, somebody's, I think my Culligan delivery is here. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I work with another show that started in the, in the cities and moved out there. It's a hunting show, the deer and Turkey classic. Mm -hmm. They they moved out there a couple of years back and I've been going out there and doing appearances out there. I love it because it's a great location. It's right off major highways in Shakopee there. So it's easy to get to and you can park free parking, huge parking lot. And, uh, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of space and it's not, I mean, they have, you know, the big, big open rooms, but also you have all these smaller areas that you can kind of weave and wind through and see all these, uh, it, it, you know, it's got a little bit more character to it. I think at times you don't feel like you're just in this big arena, you know, walking around uh, in a square. So it, it, it's, uh, it allows you to, I think, to have a little bit more personal experience with some of the exhibitors there. And then, um, you know, I mean, if just for nothing else, being able to drive to it without having to drive through downtown Minneapolis and then parking right, sure. you know, right in the parking lot at the venue. I think this is great. Yeah, you know, parking prices have always been a real sore spot with a lot of people, and I don't blame them. Who wants to pay $30 before you even get an admission ticket? Right. And and that's removed. And, you know, when we had our show in St. Paul, I always felt the auditorium where all the resorts and lodges were was the most intimate part versus the big rooms that had all the boats and campers. And so when we thought about going to Canterbury, I, I could have filled – their big room up with boats and campers within a few phone calls, but I didn't feel it would give the representation people deserve. And there's a good boat show in town and there's a couple of RV shows. So we're just going to stick to the resorts and the lodges and it's definitely going to have that feel. Um, I'm just excited. You know, we're, we're, the floor plans are filling up and I think we're going to use about two thirds of the space available to us. So we should have about 150, 160 exhibits out there, which is a lot, but it is going to have that intimate feel. So I think people are going to have great conversation with the resorts and lodge owners. I think, you know, uh, being somebody that works with a lot of Canadian lodges and, um, spent a lot of time at the booth with uh, Taz and Lake Lodge and Trails and Outfitters. You know, the, we're looking from their perspective, they're looking for an audience that is looking to come talk to Canadian, you know, uh, outfitters and guides and destinations. So the fact that you're going to have Canadian fly-ins there and uh, lodges and tourism from, from up in Canada is perfect mm-hmm. for us. Of course. So we're definitely excited about that. And I know we've done some other shows where you end up in a booth next to somebody, you know, that, that, it, you know, whatever it, craft supplies or whatever, something completely different than, you know, a Canadian lodge. So this is uh, the, like I said, we're excited about this and, and Barry to have that many already. For, I mean, it's, it's a, it's the first show, but obviously you've been doing shows for a long time. So it doesn't really, for, for us, it doesn't really feel like it's your first show, but it, it's a, it's a kind of a new show. It's in a new location to have that many exhibitors. I mean, you've got to feel pretty good about that. Well, and I do. And yeah, I guess, I guess I should say it's this first show, but not my first rodeo. So right. <laughs> as, as I've been doing it for a while and you know, the thing that I've really enjoyed too is, you know, we're, as we were starting fresh, I said, you know, we're going to have resorts, lodges, outdoor products. Reeds is going to be there at the big display. Lots of mom and pop tackle shops are going to be there. Um, but I wanted to not, while I, I like to have product, you know, um, like gear bags, you know, you're going to have outdoor bags and there's going to be some joints there selling products, but I didn't want the window companies there. I didn't want the gutter companies there. So yes, it's easy money to grab, but we're just saying no to it. As long as we're starting fresh, we're going to keep them out and just let the show grow organically. Yeah. And I, and I should say, I get it. You know, it's, it's hard to turn down money. Somebody wants to have a booth there. It's it's hard to, <laughs> hard to turn them down. I totally understand that 100%. But it is nice as somebody that, you know, wants to go there and is looking for specific things not to, you know, to have, you know, to almost to have, uh, to know what to expect and, and to see vendors yeah. what you're expecting to see there. Um, and, and obviously uh, products are, if they're outdoor related products, I mean, that's a great thing to have. 
there as part yeah. of it. Yeah, and you know, I uh, I'll, I'll admit I do have an affinity uh, for pitch joints, and we're going to have a few of them out there. Not a ton, but we're going to have some. A because they do all of our shows. B I think they provide a certain amount of entertainment for people, mm. and you can get a little too pure, and a, you can get a little bit boring if you go a little too pure. So I like to have a variety of stuff, but. I'm really proud of everybody who's in the show. It's it's just going to be a great environment um, with just none of the stuff you really don't care to see. So it's all win-win. Right. And I want to ask you about this um, because I'm sure this is something that's weighed on your mind, especially with the, as the internet came about and then the internet expanded and people would say, oh, sports shows are dying and this and that. You don't need them anymore. And I'll, I'll tell you what, for a while, I was kind of on that train a little bit like, you know, you can, you can get so much from the internet these days. But since I've been working, particularly with some of these lodges, since I've been working some of these shows, um, from our business perspective for what we do with Fish Hunt Forever and then also with Tazin and some of the other resorts, there, there is something about meeting people face to face and shaking hands yeah. and building relationships <laughs> that you cannot get over email. You cannot get it over the Internet. And there there is still I mean, that and that is the number one way. I don't want to say the number one way to sell, but that's exactly what it is. It's the number one way to gain clients and, and guests and, and, and um, you know, users of your products is by meeting them in person. And that's what you get at those sports shows. Yeah, they re you really do. And when, you know, I've been here since the internet started becoming prominent. So I know it has kind of ebbed and flowed. And, you know, it became apparent that you can't trust everything you see on a website. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for the public and the operator to talk to each other to kind of, I mean, they're going to want to, the operators definitely want to get business. Everybody's there for a reason, but boy, you know, when you don't click with someone right, right off the bat. And if you talk to, you know, a resorter and you're like, eh, I think I'm going to go down the road. <laughs> I'm not getting along with this guy. Then you do. But when you spend your, your family or your buddies, precious time and money to go to a resort and you do not click with the owner and operators, uh, boy, it's a tough week. And, and for so many of these people too, um, they have long established relationships and their clients who no matter what are going to come back to them the next year, they love to come down to the shows, grab a beer, BS with them for 20 minutes. And, you know, it's just a big social setting. So it's a great way to retain your customers and a great way to get new customers. And what people tend to, you know, I'm going to drop out for a couple of years. Well, that's fine but your customer is still going to show up and he's going to talk to somebody else. So there's a lot of good reasons to, ste uh, to keep doing the shows and uh, we'll keep doing them as long as people want them. We get questions all the time, you know, when, from the lodge perspective, we get questions all the time that says, uh, Hey, uh, you know, I'm from the twin cities. Um, you guys going to be at the show. We'd love to stop by and talk to you. Cause when you think about it, some of those fly-ins, if you're looking at five, 10 grand, Per person on mm -hmm. some of these trips that that is a lot of money and you want I, I, there's we've had a couple of guests in the, in the past few years that literally call or meet us uh, have come to the show multiple days in a row to sit and sit down yep. and talk to us with a notepad all right so what about this what about this well what if this happens well, yep. you know they they do their their homework to make sure that uh, that they want to spend the money and go on this trip and then they'll go home and then after the show they'll call and call and call and be like all right well I got this guy's asking this question so having that that face-to-face -face time is uh, is so critical when you when you're running a big operation or an expensive operation for some of these people so it's very important. No, I agree completely. All right. I'll tell you what, Dan, what's our time at there? Should we take a break? Yep. All right. Good. Okay. Good conversation. All right. We're going to take a break. <laughs> uh, if you got a couple of minutes, we'd love to have you back to talk a little bit more about what people can see at the first, the first yep. annual Sportsman's Resort Lodge and Outdoor Product Show, January 17th through the 19th at Canterbury Park in Shock to be more with Barry Snake when we come back. It doesn't get much better than fresh perch and fresh walleye. If you're looking for an exciting winter fishing destination, come to Devil's Lake, North Dakota. Hay Bale Heights Campground and Resort is on the ice with a fleet of snow bears, keeping you mobile and warm so you can stay on the roaming schools of fish. Hay Bale Heights on the east end of Devil's Lake has knowledgeable guides, comfortable cabins, and their own lake access, making your trip as successful 
and stress-free as possible. To book your trip, go to haybaleheights.com. That's haybaleheights.com. We're back. Sporting Journal Radio. Thanks for watching or listening wherever you're at. I'm Brett Amundsen along with Barry Seneco, Seneco Productions, talking about the different sports shows around the area, including a brand new one. Coming to Canterbury Park in Shakopee, it's the first annual Sportsman's Resort Lodge and Outdoor Product Show, January 17th through the 19th. And um, Barry, we talked a little bit about the other shows around the region. A lot of people know about those. Um, Obviously, we're trying to help get the word out about this new one. And I I mean, it's a new location. I know a lot of people are excited about it being in Shakopee because it's going to be easy to get to, free parking. And uh, and then obviously, they're not having to drive through down the downtown area of the Twin Cities, which is nice. And I'm sure you're hearing about that from a lot of people. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, I think as an industry, the day of the 300,000 square foot sports show just is becoming less necessary. I think shows are becoming more specialized, and that's why it interested me in doing this one. While all of our other sports shows, you know, it's one third boats, one third campers, uh, one third resorts and lodges, but those are more like a hundred and thousand square feet, eighty thousand square feet, very comfortable. I just feel like people no longer are interested in going to the massive buildings, and it's just it's such a you kind of want to get to doing what you're doing. We're we're getting a little short on how much time we like to do things, so we just want to get to it. Um, so that's why I think this this show is going to be very interesting. And, uh, you know, I, I do know the hunting show and they do a great job. And that Canterbury Park area, I think, is going to become increasingly important in the show industry locally. I'll have a sports show. They've got a hunting show. There is already a home show there. I think it's going to become quite a little hub. So yeah. it'll be fun to see it grow. Let's talk a little bit about what people can expect mm-hmm. this year at this show. I know you've announced a couple of speakers. Uh, Joe Henry, I think, is going to be there, and Tom Wynn, it sounds like. Yeah, so I've known Joe for quite a while. Um, boy, probably 15, 20 years now. I'm sorry. And Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting to that point where I've known everybody 20 years. So I'm, I'm just starting to get the sun trained in on this. <laughs> I'm only saying but, that because uh, Joe will be on Joe will be on this show right after we get done talking to you. So, Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. No, Joe is, uh, he's wonderful to have. He's a friend. He's wonderful to have as an exhibitor uh, for, for Lake of the Woods. And he's a tremendous seminar speaker. Um, yeah. What I do to judge seminars, I go watch people sit down and then I go about 20 minutes before it closes and see how many people have left and he never loses anybody. So he's going to be talking all three days and um, yeah, expert insights, spinners for walleye success, and also multi-species fishing success on any body of water. He entertains people. He gets them a lot of education. I always bring him around every other year. And then we're bringing in Tom Wynn, who I've never worked with before, but I've heard a lot of great things about. And he's really only been hitting the tournament since 2020, but holy cow, this guy's taken the world on storm. And he'll primarily be talking about uh, mastering forward-facing sonar. So definitely a topic a lot of people are interested in. Um, I hear he's a great guy. It's going to be a lot. We're taking him on the whole circuit this year. So love him or hate him. I got him for three months, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm expecting good things out of Tom Wynn. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, everybody is watching him right now and he's got the classes, right? I looked over there like yeah. Dan's. Yeah. Dan's Wynn University. University. Yeah. So he, um, yeah, he'll be great. He'll be great. So, and then um, wildlife adventure center, I'm assuming that's going to be some animals that people can come see up close. Yeah, yeah. We I always like to bring some animals to the show. The kids get bored. They get a little antsy. They love seeing the animals. We've not worked with them. They're new to us, so I literally don't even know what critters they're bringing out. A lot of times, they'll they'll figure out the animals that are you know the most active at that point. And then, uh, so we'll have the reptile stage show, and those are timed shows. But then you can also go in there and just you know talk to the people, look at the critters when you're walking around, and. A staple of the shows that is a little bit complicated this year is live trout fishing, which we always love to bring live trout fishing to the shows. And we are again, but 
holy moly, it was really hard to fish trout this uh, to source trout this year, but we got it handled just last week. So the kids will have plenty to do. They can walk around and when they get antsy, they can go fishing or take in the reptile show. What, what were the, was there um, problems just getting people getting fish or was there some red, red tape or what? Well, uh, we've lost a lot of operators in the last number of years. There's been increasing red tape that just made it untenable. So a lot of the fishing farms just decided to do something else. The hmm. operator that I use, who's kind of the only last man standing, it was a weird summer in that with the warm temperatures and he uses natural uh, water flow, he doesn't use pumps and whatnot. They just, the fish really struggled this year. So while people fish and they take the fish home, um, the ones who don't, we're going to be kind of recycling them later on in the season. We've got a plan. It'll work, but they'll be super fresh at this show. So the fish are always biting. The key is to get out there early. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Why do you say that's just for the kids? I love the trout, the trout well, pond. Okay. I'm there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Kind you of know, big I, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to put you on. I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit. Uh, sure. if, when we talk about the different lodges and resorts, or uh, you know, maybe destinations that people may uh, experience there, can you give us an idea of maybe the range? You know, some of the geographical locations, or you know, some of the idea, uh, an idea of some of the exhibitors that are going to be out there. Yeah, I would say the majority of them. It's a good mix between what I call domestic resorts and um and canada it's it's a pretty good mix pretty much everybody north of the cities and then mostly ontario though we do have a couple of uh, manitobas people generally travel straight north so while when we go to our dakota uh north dakota and south dakota markets we'll see more manitoba uh in minnesota you see more ontario so, but great fly-ins and great drive-ins. We've got some campgrounds, um, but you know, definitely the Brainerd area uh, and, and lakes that I haven't really even heard of before. So, you know, Boundary Waters, if you wanna go up there, if you wanna go to Ely, but a really nice mix of Canadians, which, you know, Canada was shut down for a few years there. So it is really nice to see them coming back. And it's nice to see people we haven't seen since our St. Paul show. So um, whether it's Minnesota, some Dakotas, uh, but mostly Northern Minnesota and Ontario. Well, you'll definitely see one from Saskatchewan too. I just. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know there's at least one there because I'll be working the booth for it. So, um, which is kind of nice. And we hear that all the time. Like they'll look up and we have our, our backdrop. We'll have a big lake trout on it, a big pike. So they, we've got lake trout that are world record size. And then we've got pike over 50 inches. It's a fly in. It's a real, just an unbelievable place. And they'll see the big fish and they'll be like, all right, where are you guys at? And then we'll say Saskatchewan. And a lot of them will be like, oh, can I drive there? Where's that? <laughs> yeah. You're not, you're not going to want it. Where is Saskatchewan? Is that West? What is that on the, is that by Manitoba? Yeah. It's so, but then you get the guys that'll, that are the lake trout and the big pike guys like, oh yeah, it does. And hmm, we were hoping you guys were going to be here. We want to talk to you guys. So. Nice. It, it is interesting. I mean, obviously, it's a lot of guys like walleyes in Ontario. They want to drive to a place in Ontario a couple hours away and catch a bunch of walleyes. So it's uh, it's kind of a it's kind of a mixed bag for us because at, at, at one point you don't want to hear guys be like, oh, do you have walleyes? Can I drive there? No. But we're also the only place like that in a sea of walleye yeah. Ontario or Manitoba destinations. So it's kind of nice for us. Yeah. Well, all my family came from Saskatoon, so I definitely know oh, where Saskatchewan is. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It's funny, you know, uh, I, we, we spend so much time up there. I mean, uh, two, three times a year we're up there. Our family is from Saskatchewan as well. And uh, some some people can't even pronounce the name of the province. You know, they don't <laughs> know exactly. no where it is. Just, I just tell combine. people, go to Montana about halfway through, head north. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, no, that's great. Well, uh, you know, I wish you, I wish you luck with the event and of course, yeah. all the sports shows. Um, what tell people where, like, where should we go online to learn a little bit more about this show and all your shows? Yep. For this one, just go to mnresortshow.com. And before too long, we'll have the ticket sales on there. You can buy tickets at the doors, just 12 bucks, you know, and, um, 
You can buy them at the door or you can buy them online. Save yourself a little time. Just breeze in when you show your phone. And we'll have that set up in the probably next week. And um, that's about it. Just go to mnresortso.com. We put the exhibitor list out about a week before the show, but the special events will be there. The seminar schedule is up. And really simple to navigate, mnresortshow.com. I had somebody ask me, I think I emailed you about this the other day. I had somebody ask me just a couple of days ago if uh, they could still get a booth at that show and, and mm-hmm. be an exhibitor. Is that, once? what's your deadline for that? Well, you know, at all of our shows, we sell until we either sell out or the show opens. So oh, we, we never have had a set deadline. Um, you know, even now, as an industry, a ridiculous amount of people still sign up in November and December. And and I can guarantee you we'll have a few resorts even signing up in early January. So we don't go until we say we're full. We no, keep going until go. we're full. Well, it gets busy. I mean, this time of year, especially if you if you hunt or spend time in the outdoors, mm-hmm. like I I, I can't, I've, people have been asking me about uh, what are you going to do for New Year's or what are you going to do, you know, last week of Christmas or early or last week of December, early January. I, said, I, I can't think past next week right now. Like I, I need to get to exactly. fall before I can start thinking about <laughs> yeah, that. I'm you busy know, quite right honestly, now. you know, the resorts are busy all summer and then they mm-hmm. take a certain amount of time to shut down and then they start thinking about show season. So, uh, boy, I think we just this week, we had 15 space requests come in that we got them information and we'll probably get them signed up in the next 10 days. Just 15 last week. Wow. There you go. So there may be even more by the time the show gets here then. Absolutely. It's going to be fun. No matter what, it's going to be fun. And uh, it's it's going to be great to see this evolution grow. We've had some people who aren't able to make it this year, like Paddle North. They have great inflatable paddle boards. They'll be with us next year, but his scheduling was an issue. And, uh, and and people like Silencer Central who come to all of our shows, they weren't able to do it this year. They'll be there next year. So it'll be a nice evolution over the next couple of years. I mean, that has to be the hardest thing about doing these shows is picking the right weekend because you have to have yeah. a weekend that works with the venue. You have a you have to have a weekend that doesn't really conflict with other shows. It doesn't conflict with your own other shows. And uh, it's it's tough finding the right, especially now, because there's something every weekend, it seems like. Yeah, it does get tricky. And uh, but we are lucky to have great relationships with our buildings. I consider competition to be friendly. So I, you know, it's not a us versus them mentality for me. So I speak to several other people who put on shows to just try and coordinate. Let's just kind of make right. this win win. Hey, can you move a week or I'll try to move a week. So the resorters can go from me to you or vice versa, instead of having to make a decision. Well, and honestly, so, sometimes, you've got to work with people. And sometimes it's not bad to have two shows going on at the same time uh, for, for exhibitors. If they have enough help and enough supplies, yeah. they can have a booth at both play. You know, I've had to do that, go back and forth between Shakopee and, and uh, the convention center before. And, sure. you know, uh, and then, you know, people that are coming to town, maybe they're, they're from out of town. They came to town for the show. Like, Oh, there's two shows. We can hang out for the weekend, yeah. go to both of them. So. Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> Barry, we'll let you get back, get rested up for the show season. I appreciate the time. Uh, MNResortShow.com, January 17th to the 19th, Canterbury Park, Shakopee. Uh, Barry, thanks for the time today on the show. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Lake of the Woods, the walleye capital of the world, is calling out to you. From the Northwest Angle to the South Shore and Rainy River, this is the Midwest's number one ice fishing destination. Walleye, sager, perch, northern pike, and eel power. The fishing on Lake of the Woods is like a world of its own. Experience the most amazing fishing through one of the many full-service resorts featuring heated fish houses, ice transportation, meal plans, and sleeper fish house options. For more information, go to lakeofthewoodsmn.com. All right, this is Sporting Journal Radio. Joe Henry from Lake of the Woods Tourism joins us right now, Joe. And right before the break there, we had Barry Seneco on talking about the first annual, (coughs) excuse me, (coughs) the first annual, I think I got us cold somehow over the over the year. It's <laughs> a little under the weather. The first annual sportsman show, the Minnesota Resort Lodge and Outdoor Product Show. It's going to be January 17th to the 19th, Canterbury Park. And you're going to be speaking there, Joe. Can you believe it? You know, the funny, I tell you, the funny part is, and I almost fell off my chair because I, I just had to look where the times and things were of the show recently for some planning reasons. And I looked at my profile picture. I don't know if you've seen that. 
Oh, yeah. A large mouth. I almost fell off my chair when I saw my profile picture. No, I supplied it. But I mean, uh, for, for listeners, I'm holding, um, they're, I don't know, they're, they're green. They have a stripe <laughs> on their back and, uh, and they jump a lot. I guess the grass carp, is that what they're called? I was going to ask you about that picture, Joe. You know, I'm holding nice bass. And, uh, you know, one of the, uh, I think one of the seminars I'm doing is talking about, you know, uh, uh, catching fish in any body water that you fish. And it's about breaking apart that water and just being successful in the water. And I opened that one up a little bit more to multi-species. Certainly, I, I favor my walleyes, of course. And, and of course, the other, uh, the other seminar I'm doing is, uh, you know, something to the effect, I believe, of master's level uh, uh, spinners for, for walleyes. And, you know, that, you, you, you know um, I'm going to take the approach. We can certainly talk about forward-facing sonar touch, but I'm not going to – I want to make sure that this seminar or these seminars are geared towards the, the average angler. So that average angler, whether you use forward-facing sonar or not, can come and just really gain some insightful knowledge about how to break things apart and, and uh, how to approach a new body of water the concept of a milk run and just, uh, you know, other things I talk about are what, what are things that you'll learn in real time while on the water? Cause every day is different. And there are tips, there are little mother nature has always given us little hints of what we can do to maximize our fishing performance that day. And, you know, we get into all that stuff and it's been very well received. I've given these seminars before. And, uh, so anyway, long story short, instead of holding the walleye, which is what I hold 99% of the time, I'm actually holding a bass. So I, I know I provided it to them, but they took advantage of it. Well, uh, there's a lot of jokes, and I'll just – I'll leave them. I'll, I'll just let you have this one, Joe, for sure. Yeah. No, hey, listen, Brett, all kidding aside, I uh, – Fishing for I, beginners. I was, to, I was talking to a buddy of mine. Uh, so Todd Bissett uh, is a guy I went to high school with. He's got a small tackle company, a fam- a shameless plug, but it's called Lena Lures. It's a little tackle company out of St. Cloud, Minnesota, and – I talked to Todd. I'm like, Todd, you know, I get catch those darn grass carpet, man. I'm after the real king of the fish, the walleyes. And he goes, Joey, I understand something. He goes, back in the day when I was thinking about fishing, he says, I really enjoy catching 30 fish a day, not just uh, five or six. <laughs> well, <laughs> he, he does have a point, and uh, it, it's just fun ribbon. I love catching bass, too, and I love catching everything. And, you know, really, when, I, when you talk about getting kids into fishing and things like that, you know, it's not bad to uh, – you get them out bass fishing a little bit too. They're probably going to get a lot more activity initially. Yeah, action, action for sure. You got to get them yep. hooked, as they say yep. on fishing. Yep. See what I did there? All right. Well, it is. It is yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> well, then, Danny, I, I tell you, that mustache boy, he is sharp. Eh? <laughs> we are going to get into the sports show season here, and uh, we'll have more to talk about with that. But we, we should talk about ice building. People are just jacked about ice fishing right now. What are things looking like up at Lake of the Woods? Well, I'll tell you. So here's the deal. We uh, n- number one, we got single digits and teens in the forecast for the next couple of weeks. That is a good thing, and it's actually not going to get above freezing. So the forecast, uh, temperature wise, is looking really, really good for us. Um, secondly, we already have ice forming in some of the back bays and things. So you know, uh, um, and that's that photo you're showing there is actually a few days back. Now it's so much more robust. We probably have uh, an inch or more of ice on the that the Bostic Bay, but. Uh, there's probably more than that now. There was an inch as of yesterday. So things are coming along nice. And, yeah, you know, it's going to take a little time for the lake to freeze over. We're going to have to have some calm nights and stuff. And it's going to happen, though. And things are shaping up very nicely. Are people getting jacked up? Oh, heck yes. You know, deer hunting's winding down for most. The next thing on the calendar, if you're an outdoors person, is, you know, ice fishing. Uh, we got the, some of those, the ice fishing shows have happened already. Of course, the, the granddaddy of them all is the St. Paul Ice Fishing Show coming up, uh, you, you know, here in about a week. And uh, that's a, that's in St. Paul. Man, I'll tell you something. That show is a, it's a fun show. Certainly, I'm going to be there uh, with Lake of the Woods Tourism. But you're going to have the who's who in the ice fishing industry at that show. And uh, there'll be a lot of good deals on fishing tackle and suits and lures and lures you've never seen before. Small ice fishing. I got an email from a tackle company that's selling these automatic jiggers. That You, you know, I mean, just there's so much to see there. And uh it's really a fun time if people enjoy, a, uh, you know, you know, ice fishing and uh, ah, God dang it, there's seminars there, the whole ball of wax. It's it's a good time of the year. Um, I want to say to everybody, please, please focus on safety. Mm-hmm. Part of that safety is making sure you just don't take chances going out there. You don't have to be the first one on the ice. 
Make sure you got wearing picks. If you have a float suit, wear a float suit. Make sure you got a cell phone with you. Try to go in pairs. Try to have a rope with you in case somebody would go through and get them out. I mean, just all the different safety precautions. In fact, we just put a, a quick five-minute uh, ice fishing checklist on our, our Lake of the Woods Tourism's website. Uh, our, new, our newsletter just pushed it out. And But I just say be safe, right, Brett? I mean, isn't that the message of the of this time of the year? Yeah, for sure. I, I'm generally not a big early ice guy for that reason, but uh, the fishing can be so good. Um, it's it's That's nice. the problem. I actually had a buddy. <clears throat> yeah, that's the problem. I had a buddy uh, today just send me some videos of him going out and checking ice. And I think, you know, one of the lakes here is, I think he said it was had like three inches on it already. So you talk about that big lake taking a little bit to freeze over, Joe, the temps are right. And if, if it stays calm and things don't blow up there, I think you'll see it sooner rather than later. I know Brandy uh, from Riverbend snapped me hmm, maybe on Tuesday this week, Monday or Tuesday, uh, out in front of their resort on the Rainy River there. And it was just covered in, in mallards and Canada geese. And I was like, of, of course, the, the duck season is closed and you've got ducks everywhere up there. And she goes, yeah, this is the most we've had all season, which is pretty typical. And I, Dan, I just realized I didn't say anything about the duck season closure yet. So I should say it here before the show's over. Otherwise, we'll get emails like, you said you're going to talk about this and you didn't. Um, I push for a, a late duck season all the time. And this year, people are going to be like, oh, closed at the perfect time this year because everything got cold and froze up. And and you're, for the most part, right. If we can make it to the end of November, I'm usually pretty happy. So I always push for starting at the beginning of October, going to the beginning of December or the end of, end of November for our 60 days. And Dan, um, you were gone for it in Wisconsin. And I, I'm curious to see what you saw over on your lake there where you're hunting. Because here, this past weekend, we actually duck hunted on, on Sunday. And there was more mallards around. I mean, huge flocks of mallards around, <clears throat> huge feeds of Canada geese around. And they were around for a couple of days. And then uh, obviously the cold weather hit and the lake started freezing up. So a lot of them started, started to leave, but we still could have used those few extra days because those are the ducks that we want to target the most. So I know it was the season closure may have been real close, but boy, if we could have had even five more days, I'm sure we could have picked off some mallards this week before we, we started to focus on ice fishing. So there rant over now I'm, now I'll be ready for ice fishing soon here, Joe. So uh, I know somebody else was asking me yesterday too what our plans were for Lake of the Woods for ice fishing yet. And, you know, I'm sure we're going to have something for a glow up there. We usually have a media camp up there. We'll see. But uh, I'm looking forward to ice fishing up there this winter, Joe. I did. Well, I just spoke to uh, Ray Ruiz from the Twin Cities, you know, and he's got Baz Tech. And, you know, Ray, uh, Ray's going to be bringing a, a group up this, uh, this ice fishing season. And uh, I actually mentioned that we got to get uh, – yeah, you and Danny involved in that too, but you know, uh, uh, yeah, you know, we're we're gonna get up there. We always get up there together, and we we make some uh, we make some magic, and we always have fun. But at the same time, we, you know, we get some good stories, produce some good assets, and uh, it's part of it. And you know, I'll tell you, a good old Lake of the Woods, man. You know, to have a fishery in our backyard that's got millions of walleyes, millions of saugers, it's got a, an infrastructure of resorts and outfitters that provide you know, the services they do. They put the heated fish houses out. Early ice, they have light ice rigs, specialized. They take you to the fish house. They drop you at the door. So you're in a warm trailer when you go out. You're in a warm fish house when you fish. As the season progresses, you can either take their ice transportation or eventually there'll be ice roads available. You can drive your own vehicle. I mean, think about that infrastructure. Think about how that opens up ice fishing to even the person that doesn't ice fish very much. They don't mm -hmm. have the equipment. They don't have the understanding. They're intimidated by big ice. I mean, isn't it great to get new people into the sport as well as existing people that are honoring their, their traditions over the years? Yeah, and I mean, you don't even have to have the gear. I mean, I remember the first time I ice fished Lake of the Woods and I brought the heaviest deer hunting, coldest weather clothing that I owned at the time. <laughs> You know, this is a, this is a long, long time ago, and everybody just made fun of me because you, you know you're going to be in a heated bomber, right? And then you're going to be in a heated house, right? I mean, you're going to be sweating the whole time, which I was. So I learned. And, Joe, we got to, before we let you go here, we got to bring up the Minfish auction uh, real quick before we go because uh, this is a pretty big one. Yeah, it is. And I'll tell you what. So, you know, folks, if, if I, so the, the Minfish auction, it goes to support. Um, all the different activities Minfish is doing, but most importantly, the legislative activities, the lobbying efforts. You know, over the last couple of years, Minfish, which is an organization in Minnesota, it's a nonprofit, and its whole purpose is to um, make sport fishing in Minnesota more quality. But you know that that's one heck of a, a mission, and 
you know, last couple of years, they've been instrumental in driving about $110 million um, dollars towards, you know, sport fishing in Minnesota. Improvements such as, you know, uh, making our fish hatcheries more modern and, and uh, efficient. Um, shore fishing opportunities for everybody that shore fishes. Uh, you know, boat ramps that are either dilapidated or need to, uh, to be extended because we have such bigger boats now than we ever used to have. I mean, uh, uh, education, getting kids into fishing, which all those things, men fish is responsible. So this, so the money that you would be purchasing fishing trips with, uh, rods and reels, pop over fish houses, there's an ice castle. We have three trips from Lake of the Woods. Um, Brett, uh, Brett, you, you donated the uh, a media package from Fish Hunt Forever and Sporting Journal Radio. I mean, there's there's tons and tons of incredible, incredible ice fishing packages. Fish with a guide who, there, Brett, there's opportunity to fish with fishing guides that are famous in Minnesota. What's that worth? You know what? How about how about spending time ice fishing with Matt Hendricks and Jim Johnson, who are pro hockey players, you'd be able to fish in an AquaView hard-sided fish house that's loaded with AquaView cameras with two NHL hockey players. Now, what, what's that worth if you have kids that are in hockey? I mean, yeah. or Terry Steinbach from the Twins. <clears throat> that's cool. Yeah. Isn't that neat? Isn't that neat? Look at that stuff. Look at the resorts that are represented. But you know, all these are donated to the cause. And if you want to, you know, buy an ice fishing trip, buy some ice fishing tackle, whatever the case might be, take a look at the Minfish auction. If you Google Minfish auction, uh, ice fishing auction, it's going to pop up for you. And there are so many really cool fishing packages and and trips and people to fish with. And I mean, it's it's a neat deal and it's it's for such a good cause. Yeah, there we are. Fish on forever. You got to scroll down a little bit, but we're on there, right? <laughs> right down yeah, there's there. already, already a nice bid on there too, which doesn't surprise me a bit. And that I got a feeling that bid's probably going to go up a little bit because uh, you guys do such a good job. But you know what? Uh, it's it's a, it's a good cause. Check it out. It's it, plus it's Black Friday coming up. It's ice fishing coming up. It's time, baby. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Joe. Uh, if people want to get a trip planned to Lake of the Woods, what should they do? Uh, check out our website, and that is Lake of the Woods. MN.com. Sporting Journal Radio is a division of Macaba LLC. If you've got a question, comment, or story idea for us, send us an email. Go to sportingjournalradio.com. While you're there, you can learn how to advertise on the show and visit our store for hats, hoodies, coffee mugs, and more. Go to sportingjournalradio.com.